Okay, we are live. Sawyer Psalm Show, number four. Hi there. Welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm with uh, Adolfo Ferrando and uh, the nerd stalker himself. Uh, this is a fun show today because we get to talk about autumn and what's happening right now. Uh, this is a great time of the year. It is now officially October 1st. It is um, now on. We are in the fall season. And, uh, you know, I just got through celebrating a great month called California Wine Month. So that was a fantastic time. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the things that I did last month. Um, but hey, looking forward, there's a lot of new things coming on. So today I really dialed in some of the wines to talk about what we're going to be doing this fall, the food pairings, and all the great things we're going to be telling you to go to because I'm probably going to be there too. So Adolfo, how are you doing today? Good, great, man. Okay. So all the all the goodies going up, all the events. Did we mention those things? Already? No, we did not mention so a thing yet. What's happening now? So Sonoma County. Sonoma County. Let me just uh, start this off by saying I got a great experience uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, Rodney Strong. Thank you, Rodney Strong, for hosting another great concert to finish off their series with the B-52s. Um, had a fantastic time there. Got to taste some of those new Rodney Strong wines. But I got to say one thing about the B-52s. That band is ageless. It's like a fine wine that it will go on forever. And this is the kind of thing that you get when you've got that kind of great college-oriented band. I loved how almost every song that they sing is about science. And if you really listen to their lyrics, they're awesome. And especially when you got great wine in your hands. So that's one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is, um, you know, these kinds of wines. It'll give us that kind of new light like we get with all the great leaves that are turning right now and the brightness and freshness that we, we deserve going into this uh, Indian summer or autumn or fall or whatever you want to call it. But it's a great time of the year and it's a great time to be drinking fine wines. So. So uh, to start with, I wanted to say um, one of the great things uh, we were talking about is California Wine Month. Um, I went to a fantastic event, and it is right here, as you might be able to see this, San Francisco, California Wine Summit. This was put on by the Wine Institute with association with the uh, Court of Master Sommeliers as well. We had a fantastic time really talking about some of the fine wines that are trending right now. And to start with, I wanted to talk about white wines because it's something that um, we, we keep learning more about white wines. As much as we think red wines are it, that's all we got now, and forget Chardonnay, forget uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Well, guess what? There's all sorts of alternatives in every category of white wines. And uh, we got to explore that in a seminar that I thought was really well done. And uh, my great friend uh, Debbie Zacharias um, hosted that. And she's from uh, Ferry Building Wine Merchants and uh, a very fine friend of mine. But really what it came down to is, you know, some years ago, all we were talking about, if we were 30 years ago, all we were talking about was Rieslings and, and these kinds of more obscure kinds of grape varieties. Then Chardonnay came in. To play, and then Sauvignon Blanc came in, and now we're kind of going back to these smaller kinds of grape varieties that are kind of coming back in vogue. Some of them are dry, some of them are off dry, some of them are sweet, but it depends on what you're serving. So I wanted to bring a couple today that were what we would call off dry, and they're from fun areas that kind of exemplify California Wine Month. And believe me, September might have been California Wine Month, but I, I feel like every month is California Wine Month, so why not keep talking about it? So the first one I wanted to pour for us is one from up in Amador County, and uh, this is from uh, the great um, Vino Nocetto Winery, and this is called uh, Frivolo, and this is a Muscat, um, and it's Muscato Bianco, and what I love about it, it says Nocetto right here, and uh, vino nocetto in Italian means wine nuts. So there you go. Um, these people are great. And if you really ask me my favorite Sangiovese made in California, I'd point you in their direction too. I think that they've done a great job with this. But I poured myself a little bit just so you can see this. Um, you can see a little bit of bubbles there. And this is a little bit um, the frise style. So that means it's not just... Um, the white wine, but it's got some bubbles going on in there, so it's got a little bit of lift to it. It's actually about medium body. It's not too big, 
Um, but I think the first thing that you get when you really taste this wine is, before you even taste it actually, is the aromatics. And I love the flowery smell of this. I think this is a beautiful, wonderful style of wine that really invites you in. It's that ripe melon, that little bit of tropical kinds of notes. And I get a lot of uh, pineapple off the nose too. So I'm gonna taste it. Adolfo, you got your glass there? Here, you need got a little it. touch more. Thank you, sir. You got it. Obviously, I gave him a little bit before and he liked it a lot. Oh, I'm gonna so give beautiful. one little. Just great aromatics. Mm, so nice and sweet. Mm, little bubbles too, huh? I'll tell you the other great thing about this, and I don't I don't finish every wine. This is seven percent. This is actually like the, the percentage of some beers today. Mm. Um, so this is half of what uh, a normal California wine as far as the level of alcohol is. So very easy to take to a party, especially with uh, people that don't drink that much. Um, and uh, just to, to have it be a kind of an aromatic starter. It's really good with little ceviche dishes, especially if they're really tangy, spicy foods going with this that are spicy and going with a little bit of sweetness. So you're talking about Indian cuisine, um, some uh, think Thai, think um, Vietnamese. Um, this would be so good. We actually had it um, a little while ago with an amazing dish that um, Adolfo's wife just made for us. And it was a, how would you describe it? A, a zucchini pancake yeah, yeah. with a, with an egg on top of it um, and a little bit of cheese off to the side mm -hmm. and a little bit of hot sauce on it. And you know what? We were winners. Um, we love this wine. And this is a great one to really check out. They are up in the Sierra foothills. So the reason I really wanted to spotlight them today is there's a big event coming up. And it is um, this weekend, um, and it's the Big Crush Harvest Festival um, up there in Amador County. You can find out a lot about uh, the Amador County activities through amadorwine.com. And we'll have it in the show notes. And we will have it in the show notes. And for this wine, vinonocetto.com uh, is the website. And I really love these guys. You get up there um, to those uh, fine areas up near Plymouth and uh, Shenandoah Valley, you got to visit these guys. Um, it's one of my favorite wineries in California, uh, especially their specialty in Italian varieties. And um, I think that everything up there is really worth investigating, especially uh, we'll, we'll come back at some point this fall or winter uh, with me going up to visit my favorite people at Taste, uh, which is a great restaurant right there in Plymouth. So if you get up there, anyone in the Bay Area, it's really not that far away. And if you just come to California, uh, this is a fantastic area to visit up in the Sierra foothills, the gold rush, all of those great things that you can see. It's really fun. So that's our first little example. Great stuff. And I'm going to get my little spit bucket here. Um, and the second wine I wanted to kind of taste, it's a little bit off dry. So once again, we're talking about off dry means you say off dry, but you're saying dry, but this means a little bit sweet. Um, mm. And that is a classic of California that really has um, lasted through the times. And this is J. Lore. J. Lore. This is the Bay Mist um, Estates uh, White Riesling. So uh, J. Lore never gave up on Riesling. Um, a lot of people did and pulled it out, planted a bunch more Chardonnay. Um, there's not that much Riesling planted in California um, based on comparing it to Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay. There's a lot of Chardonnay, believe me. And that's not a bad thing. I love Chardonnay, and especially the way it's being done today. Um, I think it lost itself there in the 90s and a little bit of uh, last decade, but boy, we've got the best Chardonnay going on right now um, I've ever tasted, especially these past few vintage vintages. But I will say one thing. Riesling, kind of hard to find. Uh, but when you do and you have a good brand, especially an affordable brand like this, so with that last one we were talking about, you know, about eighteen dollars. This one you can find eighteen or under, and it's a really great style. So I'm gonna pour a little bit for Adolfo. Thank you, sir. You got it. And a little bit for me. Nice and off dry there. Yep. Got a little screw cap here, so that means it's very user friendly. Um, pretty nose on this. Uh, a lot of people say petrol. Um, it smells a little bit like gas, yeah, like, um, yeah. Hey, you just opened up that gas canister yeah, cause you got that, sure. you got to light up the, the, um, 
the stove at the campsite, and this is kind of what it smells like. But it also has that nice um, kind of juicy uh, floral notes um, and the, the juiciness of the melon um, again. So very, very nice there. What I like about this wine too is that it's very balanced. You might have a little bit of sweetness in here, but you've got great acidity. And that's where the real, um, the real uh, treasures of wines come from is the acidity. If it doesn't have acidity, it's basically grape juice, and it's usually not very good. So this is great. So, mm -hmm. mm, very ripe, fresh, wonderful, expressive. Feels good in the mouth. Dry. What do you think on that finish? Oh, the yeah. only part where it is um, sweet is in the middle, yeah. and then it finishes dry, and that's why it's off dry. Wow, what a ride! What I love about the flavors, they're persistent. And that's a really great thing. And you know, Jay Lore has been one of the great supporters of the California wine movement. And I think that's why, you know, with the Wine Institute and their great program that they did with the, with the Wine Summit um, in San Francisco, at a great place called The Pearl um, in San Francisco. It's kind of uh, near Dog Patch. Um, and it's a, a great venue. Um, and I, I really had a, a fantastic time as there. Um, on Wednesday morning. But J. Lore, uh, this is the Bay Mist and this is White Riesling, 2014 vintage. So those are two great whites to, to start uh, thinking about as we get into the, this kind of season right now. We're getting into this fall weather and we definitely have um, these kind of slow cooked meals that are coming up. We'll talk a little bit more about them in a few minutes. But this is that expressive food. This is a lot of those um, Asian styles of Asian cuisine sushi with this one would be really good um, especially to offset some you know if you've got roe on top of it mm. or you know even a California roll um, with that nice Dungeness crab fantastic style and I think that Jay Lore does a great job so two fantastic wines here um, that really fit that kind of profile of California and not from the areas that you really expect this is from uh, Monterey County I want to point that out and Monterey County is a fantastic area. They really, uh, Jay Lore is very well known in the Arroyo Seco area, which is right past uh, Santa Lucia Highlands. So I was just down there um, a week ago, uh, down in Pebble Beach, having a great time. And uh, I, I can't get enough of Monterey County either. So fantastic. So speaking of Monterey County, I thought we'd start out the next segment by going into Pinot Noir. Um, last time we talked, we did a great uh, seminar on Oregon's Willamette Valley, and even uh, during that same uh, sequence, I talked a lot about Sonoma Wine Country Weekend, which we had a fantastic time doing at the beginning of last month. And this weekend is Sonoma uh, County Harvest Fair, and Adolfo and I will be there tomorrow. I was one of the wine judges. You'll see a whole write-up on this on my website on SawyerSalm.com, and there will be some uh, hot picks coming up this next week from what we learned there. Um, so I want to hold back on the Pinots from Sonoma County and um, part of Northern California for the time being. So I wanted to go into some really hot um, finds that I, I feel are, are very good and expressive of some of the other areas here in California. So the first one is one of those classics, Talbot. So we're going back to uh, Monterey County again, and specifically Santa Lucia Highlands. This is um, a great winery founded by Rob Talbot, and this is a uh, Cali Hart, and this is uh, named after his daughter. Um, 2014 Pinot Noir, estate grown. So this means that all the fruit is based on their estate. Mm. So um, this is a, a great brand to get to know if you don't know it already. But one of the reasons I wanted to pour this first, $28. $28 for a really high class California Pinot Noir. It's hard to beat that kind of price because we get into California Pinot Noir, a lot of them are up there. So I wanted to show you three great expressions of different areas in different price points. So $28 Monterey. Right. Adolfo, let's taste this. Right. right off the bat, there's some smokiness on that mm -hmm. nose. Um, I, I will say one thing. I, I feel terrible for Monterey County this um this past month because they had a terrible fire up there and I hope that it really didn't affect the 
the grapes as much as I, I, I hope. Um, a lot of the Pinot and Chardonnay grapes were picked early, so I think they probably made it out of there. There's a good video that was posted on my uh, Sawyer Somme, or sorry, my Christopher Sawyer Sommelier Facebook um, that you can watch of me up at uh, one of the wineries. Um, that was um, Albatross Ridge, and it was fantastic. So it's a really neat, expressive one. And at one point, I do kind of turn the camera, this live film, and actually show you some of the smoke still coming off the hills up mm. there. Oof. Wow. But watch that video because um, you'll be impressed by that hillside and, and where it is. It's up there about 1,500 feet. Um, and you can see the coast, and you can see the mountains, and you can almost see where the Talbot Vineyard, the original uh, Talbot Vineyard is just down the, the hill from them, but also the Santa Lucia Highlands, uh, which are just off to the distance. So very unique little video, and you can see that on um, Christopher Sawyer Sommelier on Facebook. So in terms so, of Pinos, Chris, where yep. does this sort of lie? Well, uh, I'll tell you right now, Monterey County and... Um, and Santa Lucia Highlands are, are very hot right now. There, uh, Santa Lucia Highlands is a great area, and Monterey County in general is a great area, as we found out from that Jay Lore um, Riesling as well. I think that this is uh, really right in there. It gets a little bit lost because we think so much about Central Coast, and people categorize that as just part of Central Coast. And you know, when you think about Central Coast, it goes from Monterey down to Paso Robles, down to Santa Barbara County. So you have a big, large amount of uh, space there. Whereas in Sonoma County, we've got Sonoma Coast and, and Carneros and uh, Russian River, obviously. So they're, they're very tight in comparison. And then up in Anderson Valley, Mendocino, which we'll taste in a, in a minute here, is just a, its own little being. So, it, you know, I think Monterey County... Um, is one of the best deals because when you find it and it just says Monterey County on it, that means they're not doing a designate on it. And once you get into a designate of the appellation, it it changes the price point. It really does. Um, Santa Lucia Highlands, it's not going to be inexpensive. It's going to be a, a very good value for what you get out of it. But I think that some of these special ones that are Monterey or Monterey County, and this one just is the Monterey um it's a fantastic deal. So getting this in the mouth. Big, round, lush, wonderful feeling. Cranberry, raspberries, um, nice plum notes. Are you getting that, Adolfo? Mm -hmm. Dark fruit. Yeah. Definitely not sweet. Yeah. Um, this is dry on that finish. And actually, it's quite spicy on the finish, too. Mm -hmm. For being its weight, this is medium to full-bodied, and I think that this is a really good example of Monterey County and from a great brand, Talbot. So this is twenty-eight dollars, and I think a, a hell of a good value. Oh, great deal! Yeah. That's really good for the consumer, general consumer. Mm -hmm. People want to drink it on the weekends at a party. I agree. You know, um, I'll say one good thing too. Uh, Rob is still, you know, behind his uh, brand. This was actually purchased by um, uh, Ian J. Gallo recently, the the brand, and they've done a great job of really supporting this and actually make it a little bit more um, accessible to to people out there in the marketplace too. So, if you want to look this up, you can look it up. This is um, uh, Rob Talbot Vineyards, um, and the the email or the um, website is Talbot Vineyards. So again, all of that will be in the show notes. It will be in the show notes. Mm -hmm. So and so we're going to move a little bit more north now, uh, kind of continuing this flow with the Pinot Noir. Oop, don't want to pour that out, but I have to. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, next wine we're going to taste is one that I have not tasted this um, for a while. And this is one of my favorite wineries in Carneros. So Carneros is that great region um, right between Napa and Sonoma on the southern uh, end of both of the counties. And it was uh, the first Appalachian, actually, in uh, America that crossed the county line. Oh, crazy. 1983, when it crossed the county line. It's about one-third Napa and two-thirds Sonoma County. So just a little bit more land in Sonoma County. Um, but really well done. This winery is on the Napa part, um, and this is Bouchain, 
This is um, a very special one to me, um, Carneros. This is the Bacchus collection. So this is one that you either have to go there or get online. You're not going to find this very often out there in the marketplace, except at really good restaurants. And the reason this um, one particular wine is special is it's from the estate, but it's also one clone. So when we start talking about Pinot Noirs, we get really into these clones, about the, the cuttings that we brought over from Europe. And I will say one thing. Michael Richmond, who is one of the great uh, winemakers who worked with these uh, with this great program, uh, Bouchain, for quite a while, um, uh, is one of my heroes of the wine industry. He was also the one that started Acacia Winery with Larry Brooks wow. back in 1978. And uh, he's always been a father figure to me. Um, I have great times with him. I went to his um, kind of retirement party, and I hope you're doing really good up there in Weed, California. Weed, California. Michael California. Richmond, I hope you're casting a good line and catching some good fish today. But uh, speaking of fish, and a good pairing would be right here with this um, wine. But this is the special Swan clone. Now, the Swan clone came, up, came into the United States with Joseph Swan, and it is supposedly a straight breed of, uh, from uh, Domaine Romani Conti in Burgundy. Uh, probably one of the most famous wines of the world um, is at Domaine Romani Conti on a regular daily basis. Uh, but this is one of those clones that came in uh, to Russian River Valley. Uh, Joseph Swan is based there, but also kind of spread, the cuttings did, especially when everyone wasn't so big on Pinot Noir. There were only so many people that really followed it, and Acacia was one of those um, amazing producers. And Bouchain, when Michael went there, um, about 15 years ago, it really changed its uh, program too and has done a lot more with the Swan clone. So we're going to taste this right now. This is the 2014 and that was another thing about these wines and why I brought them in is because we're talking about the 2014 vintage now. Uh, with some of the bigger, heavier wines that we're going to taste in a few minutes, they're going to be the 2012 and 2013 vintages, which are stunners too. But the 14 is a really great vintage, especially for Pinot Noir. So this is the Bouchain. Uh, Bouchain, great history there. Um, it's actually based on the old, um, it's based on a, a, where the old railroad tracks went into uh, the Carneros area. And when Adolfo and I were kids, if you went through from Petaluma, where I live, to Napa, you, dro you drove through, or Sonoma to Napa, you drove through Carneros. And guess what? There were hardly any vineyards there when we were kids, and there were tons of sheep. And so that's why it's called Carneros. Carneros means the sheep or the ram. Um, and it is an amazing area now where you see it filled with these hills covered with great grapevines. Not only for making Pinot Noir, but Chardonnay, um, some cool climate Syrah, um, and obviously some of the best sparkling wines of the United States are made there by Domaine Carneros and uh, Gloria Ferrer, Mum Napa, and all these great producers that buy fruit from there. So retail, what are we, what are we looking at? This is $40. So once again, we're under that $50 zone um, with this. Um, $40, I think that's, a, as I say, 220s, you know, 220, yeah. <laughs> Lively, fresh, raspberry, strawberry. Definitely a little more citrusy, too. I mean, do you get that little citrus burst yeah. there? Yeah. Got a, got a little bit higher acid in it. And I think that's a great thing about it. It's, it's, um, it's a cool area. Um, the Petaluma Gap, which we'll be talking about, um, definitely, believe me, this year we will be talking about it because hopefully it will become its own appellation. It's very close to becoming its own appellation, and I've got a big thing coming up in November, so we'll talk next month about it a little bit more in detail about the Petaluma Gap and what that area is all about. And We might even do a filming um, at a special winery in the Petaluma Gap to talk about that. But, wow, nice wine. Now, you're getting this one versus the first one. The first one could go with a lot of stuff. Um, this one has that persistent, really nice um, acidity, and I really like this wine. It really does. Lively is a very good app description as well. When you get into the, like the Talbot is a cross of different clones. I don't have them right in front of me. 
but this is definitely going to be a cross of the different clones that they've got planted there. Probably a little bit of Dijon, some of the older stuff as well. And then this one is just one single clone. So this is Bouchain, and I love this. This is Bouchain.com if you want to find out more about this. And uh, once again, $40, I think a hell of a deal on this. Really, really nice. And, and this is really one that crosses that, that nice bridge where you go, you know what, you got tuna tartare because of the high acid in here. Yeah, I would be doing tuna tartare with this, no problem. I would be starting a meal with this. Um, I would be doing uh, fish dishes with this. Whereas this, um, this Talbot would be a really great um, pairing with pork and a lot of things to, to do with pork. I mean, even if it's a... Uh, you know, uh, carnitas and, and tacos and things like that. This is one that can do, uh, if it's your pork chop or, or just a stew, great idea to involve the Talbot. Uh, whereas the Bouchain, remember, Bouchain is a little bit closer to the water too, especially um, the San Pablo Bay right there um, that hugs the bottom of Napa and Sonoma counties. So I think that's a, another good reason that you're kind of thinking more fish with this. And then we'll go to an area next um, with another special region up north, and that is Anderson Valley. So this is a fun wine that I recently tasted um, for the winery, uh, with the winery, Brack Mountain um, Wines, and uh, did a few write-ups um, on this wine, and I think it's a, a superstar wine. So... Um, this is Born uh, Pinot Noir 2014 Anderson Valley, and it's got a little kind of cool thing here. Mile marker 3389. Ooh, pretty interesting, huh? Yeah. So this is actually right there in Anderson Valley, just before you get to the little town of Boonville. Mm -hmm. um, so this is really cool. Um, it's got a little bit of the... The map on, no, it doesn't have the map on the back, but this is 128, and this is uh, primarily from the Farrington Vineyard, and that's right where that uh, marker is on 128, and uh, a little bit of it comes from what we call the, the deep end, which is as you get past the town of Philo, going a little bit more north uh, northwest uh, towards the ocean, and you just before you come to the redwoods up there, um, you'll you'll come to that little part we call the deep end. You get Navarro Vineyards; they're really good at um, getting fruit from the deep end, and they have a great vineyard up there. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of the deep end, but Farrington. Farrington is the main uh, vineyard in here, and Farrington is something that a lot of great wineries uh, buy some fruit from there and have certain blocks in there. And that's why Born is a very special little wine. So I'm going to pour Adolfo a little bit of this, and I'm going to pour myself some of this. And, you know, I tasted this while I was um, getting ready for Sonoma Wine Country weekend. <laughs> And I'll say that one thing about uh, Brack Mountain Wine Company is they're based in uh, he Heels, or sorry, they're based in Sebastopol, and so they, the majority of what they make is actually from Sonoma County, but this is one of those exceptions, and it's called Born. Just right off the bat, the nose is deeper, wow. denser. Mm -hmm. This is that kind of wild strawberry. Um, earthy tone kind of notes. Very smooth, like butter. Like butter. Um, I would say, Adolfo, that if wow. you're going to if you're gonna talk about the hottest um, Pinot area right now, yeah. Anderson Valley. Anderson Valley. It just is. Um, I mean, anytime I get a chance to go up there, I will. Um, if you look at my website this week, I believe, um, was posted my story that was in the Sacramento Magazine. Um, just recently, they, they called me up and said, Chris, we'd love a sommelier's perspective of where would you go in Napa, Sonoma, Monterey, Carmel, and Mendocino County, and Anderson Valley. And so I had to, to, had to go up there again uh, to Anderson Valley, and that was quite the joy, as always. Um, I'm always big on promoting Little River Inn, which my good friend Callie um, and Mark, um, their family owns that, and uh, Mark's a great chef, and John, the the sommelier there, is, is a great guy, but Callie and I, I mean, in high school, we used to write um, for the newspaper together, and we had our own column together, so um, I promote them as much as possible, and they're, that's a great place to stay, but when you go through Anderson Valley, it's really a special wine-growing region, and 
you know, I, I've done a lot of stories on Anderson Valley, and I will continue to. So this is just a brand that a lot of people don't know yet, but they should know, Born. So um, you can find this on the Brack Mountain Wine Company um, page, and this is, uh, let's see if they have it, bornwines.com, but this will be up on the website too. So let's get into this one real quick, Adolfo. Yeah. Just earthy on that nose. I like that. Um, it shows that it's from a very special area, and Anderson Valley is definitely that special area. The only thing protecting Anderson Valley from the from the ocean, mm -hmm. uh, because it's going kind of southeast to um, northwest, the only thing that's protecting it is a is a very high ridge mountain. And um, that's called Mendocino Ridge. Wow. And uh, if it wasn't for that, it would be super windy there. Luckily, it gets enough warmth to really ripen. Um, and it's mainly these kinds of, a uh, little bit later kinds of uh, grapes. I mean, Cabernet there, not going to work. It just doesn't have enough sun there. And it's influenced by the ocean. It's a little bit too close. So I think this is a very good example of the style that you would really find. Once again, uh, kind of like that Bouchain that we just tasted, this has a very nice um, burst of acidity on it too. But I really like these flavors and the texture is fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, it really is. so once again, just a recap on what we just tasted. Um, and this is $50. Uh, you can find some deals out there on that, too, if you look hard enough and maybe even look up the Brack Mountain Wine Company. Uh, first wine was Talbot, and uh, this is the Cali Hart 2014 Pinot Noir Estate Grown, $28. Second wine that we tasted was the Bouchain. This is a single clone, and that's the Swan clone. And this is the 2014, this is from the Bacchus Collection, and uh, Pinot Noir from the estate in Carneros. And the last one that we tasted was the Bourne 2014 Anderson Valley. Mile marker 3389. That you do not have to re memorize, but that's just what it is. Anderson Valley, $50. Um, and the Bacchus was 40 So there we go. Some really nice Pinot Noirs from different areas of California that are not the, the super most popular ones, but... Um, Anderson Valley, I would um, argue, is definitely one of those that's really coming up um, the, the pipeline very quickly, um, and a lot of us already are in love with it. So can continue to follow that. Excellent. Stop. Ha okay, so I think the next thing we're going to do is... Let's pop in a real quick news story. Right? Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go. Um, so this one comes from the LA Times. Making wine with biodynamically farmed grapes and marijuana. So it turns out like uh, there's some... Hello. Uh, it looks like Melissa Etheridge is in, involved with yes, this, Yes, she too. is. Uh, the Road to California's first commercially wine. Uh, Santa Cruz dispensary owner pioneered this. Uh, let's see, the owner of Verdad Wines in Santa Maria. Uh, do you know anything about this, Chris? Yes, I know Verdad very well. Um, I, she's an amazing woman. Um Louisa, so um, I, I'm not sure about their connection there. I know I was just invited to something um, that they're doing coming up here, so I might have to investigate, and I might have to tell you a little bit more about that. But I do know that Melissa Etheridge has been a part of this for quite a while. There is actually, um, I was in uh, Europe last year, and uh, I ran into a guy from Colorado who sells marijuana um, just by chance in the same uh, cab. And he told me all about uh, working with Melissa Etheridge. So um, I can vouch for that. That is completely true. Yeah. And it's very interesting. I, She's a cancer survivor. So this is, she uh, is. originally um, like uh, inspired by that too. But uh, the result is a kind of vine. A high-end marijuana product that combines organically grown marijuana and biodynamically farmed grapes made with the care of and meticulousness of Opus One. Advocates include Chelsea Handler and Melissa Etheridge. In fact, Etheridge has her own line of wines called Known Label and made by Molyneux and other celebrities have expressed interest in having their own versions. And it comes with a price anywhere from $120 to $400 a half bottle. That alone might yeah. prove irresistible to other California winemakers. 
uh, hey, um, I, I'm all for it. Um, you know, if it's legal here in California, then um, let's make it happen. And, and I'll tell you one thing. One of the great magazines that I write for, The Cleaver Root, um, it's about 20 to 25 percent marijuana based, um, the stories in there. And the new issue has a great story that I wrote on one market and Keystone, uh, the Keystone in San Francisco. Um, a, it's a very fun story. It's called um, a City to Table, um, and it's the whole concept of if everyone claims to be farm to table, how could you be farm to table if you're in San Francisco? Because there's no farms. Right. So it's about how uh, Mark Doman and uh, Banks White, the two chefs, really made great relationships through the years and how they used those opportunities to work with um, people outside San Francisco to get the finest uh, products to, to work with. It's in the same magazine that has stories on marijuana, um, and it's a great magazine to be looking at. The chefs love that magazine. It is the hot one out there, and I'm honored to be one of the writers for that. So, Wonderful. And also look at some of the new um, articles. Right now I'm working on two articles for the Psalm Journal. One is on Wenty. The Wente family, and the other one is on Dominus in the 30-year anniversary of Dominus. So those articles will be coming out. Um, there'll be headline stories in November and December issues of the Psalm Journal. And there's another good one in the Psalm Journal coming up this next month in October, and it's on bourbon. And uh, it's with my good friends from Three Badge in uh, Sonoma. It's a fantastic story. So look for all those articles coming up Great. shortly. On to the next thing. Next good thing. Morning. Okay. Back to wine. Mm -hmm. So when we get into this time of the year, we start talking a little bit different. You might remember the last um, segment we did, I had some big Rutherford cabs. And, oh, man, those, that 2013 from Rutherford was so good. And it will continue to be good. And we'll talk a lot more about that because I'm already starting – uh, my programs on what I do as the wine director for Flavor Napa Valley, which is coming up next March. Start looking on the, the internet for that, um, and it will be up very soon. Um, believe me, the classes are going to be brilliant. Tracy Dutton at the Culinary Institute um, and I, plus um, Andrew Freeman and company, and uh, Visit Napa Valley and the Vintners are all working together on this. It's going to be great. But when we get into this time of the year, we start talking about cooking a little bit slower we we still talk about barbecues because we're talking about um you know all the tailgate parties i mean hopefully the giants will make it to the playoffs mm -hmm. and we do have football and we do have the warriors coming back do not forget that um so we have a lot of stuff starting right now that's really going to be anticipation and you know chances are it's not going to rain every time that you're out there and that um indian summer is so beautiful but you still need to know these wines are not one variety, but actually a shared group of varieties. And that makes it easier when you take it to a party and not knowing exactly what everyone's cooking to take something that is actually a blend. So the first wine, uh, to kind of get back to Amador County, and I wanted to talk once more about them and AmadorWines.com or AmadorWine.com. And this is one of my favorite wineries up there for the Rhone varieties. And this is Terre Rouge, and this is Tet a Tet. Um, and this is their okay. super blend. Um, so, Domaine de la Terre Rouge. Um, it's just by terrerouge.com. But these are my great friends up there, Bill Eason and his wife. Um, this is just a fantastic producer of their own varieties. And under the Easton um, label, they do great Zinfandel too, and some of the Barbera and things like that. But I, last time I was up there, I purchased this bottle because I thought this was really special. So this is a purchase bottle, wow. and this is a 2011 vintage, which was kind of a hard vintage, but you know what? It's special. So I wrote down the blend in here. This is 45% Movedra, 28% Syrah, and 27% Grenache. And one of the reasons I want to bring that up, too, is we just did a great celebration of International Grenache Day with uh, Sandra Bernstein from Girl in the Fig and a lot of the great producers of Grenache. I did a little um, write-up on that, too, on uh, my Facebook pages and stuff and uh, Twitter and all of those things. But um, this is a fun one, you know, because... We're going up there, me and the fam are getting in the car in a couple weeks to go back up there. We're going to go to um, this area, and uh, this I was actually 
uh, my wife Simone and I were actually married in this in Amador County, so I do kind of have something in my heart for this area. But they have great wines. So this is that Rhone variety blend. Uh, we, we call it a GSM, but this would be an MSG um, because that's the order of how, how much the percentages are in this wine. Mm. So just on the nose, nice kind of sweeter fruit nose. Um, mm -hmm. Really pretty, though. Yeah. It's just a little yeah. bit riper. Um, really nice. Mm. I like that. Yeah. It is really good. Yeah, it's good. What I love about this area, wild berries. Mm. It just tastes a little bit wilder than anything else. Think about chaparral. Think about those kinds of plants that are growing in the in the areas there, you know, where it's really an interesting area that actually the, the influence of the forests and the rocks have a big impact on the flavors of these wines. And it's very true with this one. Um I just like that it's kind of got that little herbal essence to it too, but it's very balanced. It's very minerally yeah. balanced and a lot of red fruit and wild red fruits. This is definitely that kind of wine that would be very nice with chicken, uh, especially with rosemary. Uh, it would be very nice with kind of... Um, uh, you know, just kind of steak sandwiches, and almost like a, a cigar. like a cigar, like, like, like things like that, but it's got good acidity too. Yeah. Um, it's gamey and, uh, game. When we think about Cornish game hen and doing it with lavender and cooking it yeah. slow in the oven or doing kind of a pot stew. Um, this is a very nice one. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have to be a very big pot stew because this is really balanced. It's not a big, full-body, in-your-face kind of wine. It's much more just a very good, uh, well-balanced wine. So more medium body, but delicious. Yeah. Um, I think this is a great one, especially if you like wines that have a little bit more minerality. And I'll tell you one thing about this family. They love the Rhone Valley in France, and they, they aspire to make wines that are very special for their spot, up in the mountains, I think they do a great job with that. So, once again, that's Tete a Tete, and that's by Domaine de la Terre Rouge, and it's 2011 vintage. This, believe it or not, I looked it up, $18. Are you mm. kidding me? What? I think the bottle almost costs that much, and that that's amazing. Incredible. That's an incredible deal. Wow. I'm impressed. I know. I'm going to drink more of that soon. <laughs> Second one. Another great guy and very good friend of mine, Neil Collins, Tablas Creek Wines, one of my favorites in the United States for any Rhone varieties. Um, and Neil has been their winemaker from the get-go. He's from Britain. And if you ever want to taste one of the best ciders in the United States, Bristol Cider, made by him, from, Brit from Britain. Guess where he lived in Britain? Bristol. Oh, go figure. Um, Lone Madrone. Lone Madrone. Hmm. So this is the 2012 The Dodd, D-O-D-D. And this blend is Tanat, 48% Tanat, 23% Zinfandel, 15% Cab, and 14% 14 Petit Verdot. And these will be listed. Uh, it's alcohol is 15%, but that's typical from Paso Robles, a little bit more fuller bodied. Tanat. What the heck am I talking about, Tanat? Um, Tanat or Tanat B. I don't know. Um, dry farmed. Tanat is the main grape variety of Uruguay, oh. believe it or not. And it actually has a great history in France, but more in the middle of France. Um, so it is not as well known here um, in California, although there are some really cool people growing it. And the first time I ever tasted Tanat was at Tablas Creek with Neil Collins himself out of a big um, barrel that they were aging it in. This was probably 10 years ago, at least. So this is the Lone Madrone version of this. So another kind of blend here, but this one's kind of interesting. You're just a little bit different. 48% to not. Are you kidding me? Um, okay, let's taste this. 
deep, kind of sexy on that nose. Mm-hmm. Very licorice mm. darker berries, much more blackberry. Spicy, chocolatey. So good. So good. You heard Adolfo. <laughs> Say it again. So, so good. good. Legit. That is very legit. Good job, Neil so Collins. So what are you talking about here on this guy? Uh, this one, I did write that down, $50. So there we go. Um, you're kind of ramping up a little bit here. It tastes like it. It tastes like it. It deserves it. Yeah, I'm getting so much more out of that nose, too. Um, it's got a very interesting kind of... Um, what is that? That is white pepper with um, with a little lavender crossed with it. It's crazy. You know, I beg your pardon. That is $45. Okay. Adolfo and I will reinvestigate that in a few minutes. But to close out this segment, I wanted to do one last one here. And this is kind of a special one to me and to a lot of people this year. Um, And it's really worth talking about. Um, At the beginning of September, our great friend Margaret Mondavi died. And um, it was a really, it was a hard thing uh, to... um, understand a woman of that importance uh married to robert mondavi for many many years um when robert mondavi died who founded uh robert mondavi winery in the mid 60s um it was a hard it was a hardship um you know when it opened in 1966 it was a big deal um he put his life on the line he 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 wore his heart on the strings and uh, he did it and look at robert mondavi winery now one of the reasons that it became so popular, too, and a great tourist destination was because of Margaret Mondavi. She's the one that started all the art shows there. The, the concert series did so much. I mean, there's stories of her collecting the money, the original money, in cigar boxes because she had nothing to collect it in. Going with her Westphalia, um, Volkswagen VW Westphalia, to the, the local church to get all the chairs and set them up herself. You know, and then what she did with the culinary world and bringing star chefs in from across the nation to really help um, make Napa Valley what it is. Um, it's one of the great destinations, not only for wine, but for food as well. Mm-hmm. So her passing was a very hard passing. Um, I was um, I was honored uh, when uh, North Coast or uh, uh, North Bay Biz magazine uh, called me and said, can you write the uh, obituary for her? It's not an easy job. Um, but because there's too much to say about her, you got 500 words, 400 words. It was a hard one, and I, I thought a lot about her. And so today, I thought we'd finish this off with a very special wine um, that really marks what her and Robert uh, were able to accomplish in the first 50 years. Wow. And this is the 50 year anniversary um, bottle from Robert Mondavi, and this is the Maestro. And uh, obviously, that is not a female uh, referral. That is to um, that is actually to a a man, Robert Mondavi, who really did such an amazing job um, with taking a chance, moving away from the family. You know, the family. Um, if you guys know the real story, um, you know they were the ones that bought um, Charles Krug Winery, the really? oldest winery of Napa Valley, and he split from them to open his own wow. in the 60s. So they already had a great winery. That's gutsy. It was very gutsy, and you look at the art and the architecture of that building, it's amazing. And we celebrated the 50-year anniversary on the day um, just recently. Um, that was uh, end of May, I believe, or early June. And it was just such a great celebration and so many people there and and such good vibes. Um, But the fact is, this wine exemplifies what they were able to do and take some real chances. And the reason I say that is like, okay, that's got to be Cabernet. 
No, it's not all Cabernet in here. In fact, it's actually Merlot based. And so this blend is 59% Merlot. It's got 25% Cab, Franc, Cabernet Franc, 7% Cab, 6% Petit Verdot, and 3% Malbec. So basically, this is more of what we would call a Saint Emilion style blend or a Pomerol style blend. This is right bank in Bordeaux. This is Merlot based blend. And it, it's got a beautiful label on it, and this is a 2013 vintage. It is one of a kind. Um, there's still some left, and this is the one that is $50. 50 years, $50, get it? Um, but the Maestro. So this is um, something I've been able to taste a few times. Uh, it's not the first time, even though I did just open this bottle. Yeah. But um, let's stick our noses in here. Wow. There's a lot going on there. Dense. Not only black fruits, but blue fruits in here too. A little, little bit of that nice um, blueberry kind of note and boysenberry. Kind of pie-like, you know, like it's almost like a fresh um, cobbler was just made for you and I, Adolfo. Isn't yeah, that nice? Yeah. Mm, thank you. First sip, beautiful. Yeah. Lots of structure in this wine too. Yeah. For being a Merlot, everyone's like, oh, God, it's Merlot. I don't want to taste that. Wow. Um, guess what? Merlot is one of the greatest grapes in the world. Oh, go yeah. figure. For all of you guys that saw Sideways, I'd say this every single time. What's he drinking at the end? Mm -hmm. Cheval Blanc, Merlot-based. Hello. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is he had given up on his ex-wife, and he and her loved Merlot together. Mm -hmm. There's something about Merlot that's very different, and it can grow in cooler climate areas. And so Robert Mondavi... And a lot of those great people in the early days of Napa Valley were very brave in growing Merlot, not only in the Oakville area where the winery is based, but also Oak Knoll and going into Carneros, the cooler areas. Um, and Yonville, for that matter, is a very good uh, Merlot area, depending on where you're at. So we really uh, think that this is a, a special blend. Um, uh, what are you thinking, Adolfo? Are you getting this wine? Oh, it's wonderful. You know, I would, as a novice, I wouldn't guess it was a Merlot. It was so smooth, and I'm used to these really heavy Merlots. Yeah. And this thing is just totally consistent. Well, I think the Cabernet Franc in here, too, is a really mm -hmm. special part of this wine. Mm -hmm. um, when you do Cabernet Franc right, it is a, it's a genius yeah. uh, combination, yeah. and I, I really feel like this has that. That's why it's got all that structure in there. Yeah, so yeah with an entree... Oh, this is a main entree wine. Um, I would say that the Lone Madrone one would be um, a main entree too. And mm -hmm. I thought that that Lone Madrone mm -hmm. had a lot of stuff going on in there. It was just like, it almost is a mind blower because you're just not used to that much to not. Well, this one, the Merlot in here is a big player. And it's important to have this kind of blend and not just think all, everything is Cabernet based. And to be really honest, as a sommelier, you can't pair everything with uh, Cabernet if you want to be accurate mm -hmm. and you want to be really good about it. And we talked a little bit about that at the um, Great Wine Summit that we did with the Wine Institute, too. Um, mm -hmm. There's a great seminar. Um, Stephen uh, Mori, um, who's a master of wine, or sorry, a master of sommelier, had some great commentary on that. And uh, the fact is, great sommeliers know how to pair food and wine. Um, mm -hmm. They're not just about their wines. Um, and the, the fact is, um, wow. for sommeliers that work at restaurants, people don't walk in the restaurant for you. They walk in there for the chef. Mm -hmm. And your job is to compliment right. that food. And that is wow. the real skill of a great sommelier. And I loved what Steve had to say at that seminar. He yeah. really nailed it. And uh, it, was a, it was a fun seminar. So this wine is a great wine. Um, and it is a tribute not only to Robert Mondavi, but also to Margaret Mondavi. And I do want to say... One more word about someone else that passed away just recently, and that's Greg Walter. Greg Walter was a great friend of mine. He was uh, a great man who came to a lot of my classes. I would say when I was at the Lodge at Sonoma for 10 years, he was there average of at least once a month in my classes, if not twice a month, wow. sitting at the, the main bar, having dinner, watching you know, uh, the Giants play or, or um, Warriors games or whatever it was. He was a great, great friend of mine. And... And I really want to support um, one thing that's coming up next month uh, that really is kind of like a tribute to him, uh, Pinot on the River, and that's mm -hmm. in Healdsburg, and it is a fantastic event that raises a lot of money for the Boys and Girls Clubs. Um, 
but uh, he's the one that started that. And his great um, publication, The Pino Report, was very well known. I will say one more thing about um, Greg Walter and why he was so important to all of us. A lot of people do not know this um, of the new generation, but from the old generation, we certainly do. He's the one that really was the main editor of the Wine Spectator when it was down in San Diego. Okay. And so to have Jim Lau be there from the Wine Spectator and a lot of the, even a person from the founding um, uh, family, I mean, what an honor he got. And um, there is a little post on, on my Christopher Sawyer Sommelier Facebook page, if you see it, um, from from his uh, the celebration of his life that we had this past week. Thank you, Tim McDonald, for putting that on after the service. Um, it was a really special um, afternoon for all of us. But, you know, these are the people that when they pass away, it's a it's a hard one for us. You know, uh, Steve Pitcher was another guy that was a great writer that passed away. And Ben Pearson passed away um, uh, in August, uh, and it was hard for all of us. He was a great wine buyer. But Greg Walter was a great man, and I really appreciate that guy. And uh, I'll think about him almost every time I sip on Pinot Noir. So here, here to Margaret Mondavi and Greg Walter, two great people that passed away this this past month, and um, they will not be forgotten, that's for sure. So All without right, really quickly, let's yeah. get to another news story. Chris, let's do quick. it. Uh, All right, con- the Wall Street Journal. They're announcing, yeah. ironically enough, Constellation Brands eyes a $1 billion sale of Canadian wine business. Suitors said to include Ontario's teachers' pension plan as a strategic buyer. Um, so wow. what they're looking at here is a New York-based company has already received offers for the Canadian business for uh, from several parties. And uh, the identities can't be confirmed yet by the journal, although they kind of know who it is. Uh, sale reflects Constellation's strategic goal of streamlining its business to focus on uh, premium wine and beer in the U.S., uh, publicly traded Constellation began as a uh, bulk wine purveyor, you mm-hmm. guys know, in the uh, 40s and expanded through the takeover of popular wine brands like Robert Mondavi Indeed. and Claude Bois. And Ravenswood and, and others. Um, it's a very interesting one. Um, you know, we'll be talking about Ravenswood next month because it's uh, there's a good, good party coming up for, for their 40-year anniversary as well. Um, and uh, it's... Uh, it's a, a lot of big brands that would be traded there. And to be really honest, uh, Canada is a big buying market. Um, so I see where they're at. Um, when I wrote, um, there's an interesting kind of like singles um, a mating um, kind of service up there called uh, Lava Life. Mm-hmm. And I used to write for them all the time. I had to used to do a lot of research on my movie and wine pairings because um, there were certain... Uh, wines that I really wanted to pair with that movie, but they weren't accessible in Canada. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I had to really learn that marketplace. And it was really interesting, really getting into what is available up there. So, um, you know, it's it's an interesting uh, time. And uh, I'd like to see what happens here with uh, Constellation. There's a very good company, and they've always been really good to me. And uh, they definitely market those those brands and, and take care of their, you know, they... It's not like they come in and they just uh, say, you know, um, Joel Peterson, who founded Ravenswood, it's time for you to leave. No, they they love the fact that they get to work with these families that started these original wineries. And um, I think they've done a great job with that. Um, so let's see what happens. All right. Next line, Chris. What are we up to? That's it. We're nice. done. We're right. done for today. I mean, I got more, but nice. we want to we want you guys all to have a great day today, too. And I hope you guys learned some more stuff. Um, you know, like I said, uh, California Wine Month, September was great, but every month is California Wine Month. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about European wines next time. We'll get into Ravenswood and uh, some of the great things coming up uh, as we get into the colder uh, months of the year, too. But don't forget, um, you know, Pinot on the River, uh, and I believe that's PinotOnTheRiver.com. You could also look it up via um, Greg's website, Um it, which is Pinot Report, and get some information about that. But that will be in Healdsburg, and it is coming up on the 23rd of October. Um, it is the day after I will be at this crazy party at Jordan Winery, and I'm looking forward to that. And I do not know what I'm going to be wearing yet. And my birthday is at the end of the month, so a lot of fun things to celebrate and to um, 
to great wines to share with people. And that's why when we get into fall and this time of the year, we change a lot. We change clothes. I mean, I'm wearing a short sleeve shirt right now. I don't know if that's going to be happening next time uh, we do the filming. Um, but that's the great thing is start learning these other types of wine so you're ready for the fall uh, once you know the colder weather comes in and we'll all have some fun together. So follow me once again on SawyerSalm.com and uh, also the Sommelier Files, the uh, weekly newsletter, and on uh, Facebook, uh, Christopher Sawyer Sommelier, and uh, Twitter and Instagram, which is Sawyer Sommelier. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and listening out there. I, uh, you can follow me, Adolfo, at all things at NerdStalker and all the things. And uh, another episode of Sawyer Psalm Show is in the can. Ching!